Welcome back to any of my old subscribers and anybody new who either clicked on this video for the first time or saw me through the Punch Card Investing Podcast. Welcome. So I still have my library background from the podcast that I did with uh, Punch Card. So what I wanted to do was go through some of my favorite investing books, okay? So to start out, the way that I'm going to break down investing books is really twofold, right? There's the strategic side or philosophical side of investing, and then there's the actual tactical side, which is like how do you go about doing valuations, looking for undervalued companies, stuff like that, okay? Now, one of my pet peeves is that most of the investing things that you see on YouTube or just in general, most of the investing media is centered around this philosophical approach and nobody really spends time on the tactical side. So I want to highlight that. And if you don't know what I mean by tactical versus strategic, I think chess is a good example. So um, I don't know if you're a chess player, but I am. And like strategy is what a lot of people think of whenever they think of chess. It's what's fun to talk about. You know, you want to develop, you want to attack the middle, put your king to safety, get your pieces on active squares, that sort of thing. Okay. Tactics is something that you really only get better at with practice, okay? That's the calculations, that's, um, you know, finding mate in three, four, whatever. You know, any puzzles, that sort of thing, okay? That's tactics. In general, tactics aren't as much fun, but I think that they're essential to getting good at something. In essence, just practice, okay? So anyway, starting off, the first book, which I think is a great tactical investing book, is Warren Buffett and the Interpretation of Financial Statements by, who's it by? Uh, Mary Buffett and David Clark, okay? And they're, those two authors are going to come up again. But anyway, what I love about this book is that it literally breaks down the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow statement, every single line item. Like it, gives, it just gives you a, a basic one here. I'll show the camera. Like that's the uh, income statement you can see. And it goes through every single thing from operating expenses. It breaks it down, SG&A, research and development, depreciation, and it tells you like specific things to look for in each one of those that's either good or bad, okay? It's, um, I would say, invaluable. I think that you need this and you need to practice this as a just, it's essential to succeed in investing, okay? That book, my number one for sure. Okay, switching to the strategic philosophical side, the essays of Warren Buffett, okay? I've actually talked about this book before on my channel, I think, just just in a little bit. I think on my um, video where I talked about you want the stock market to go down, but this book, I think, is as close as you'll get to just distilled investing wisdom, okay? So what it is, is um, all of the Berkshire Hathaway letters that Warren Buffett's written, but what uh, Lawrence A. Cunningham has done is break them all down, take out the repetitive sections or group them together by category. And he talks about everything from how to run a business to how acquisitions work to his thoughts on valuation, taxes, all sorts of things, okay? I think it's super valuable and I find myself coming back to this book all the time just to get a refresher on a topic if I'm a little confused or something like that. All right, so next, let me pick out another tactical book. Okay, Quality of Earnings. This is a one of my favorite investing books that's like, I think, pretty underrated. You don't really hear anybody else talk about it. Um, it is written by this guy, Thornton L. Oglove. And basically what happened is he had this uh, pamphlet or something or newsletter that he wrote a couple decades ago where he would point out problems in companies' earnings that were foreshadowing bad earnings to come. Even though, even if earnings look good now, he was really able to predict what the future earnings would look like based on certain red flags on the accounting process. And he details that, okay? I mean, the book is like looking for, it says quality of earnings, but really what you're looking for is uh, red flags, uh, traps, that sort of thing, value traps. Uh, and it gives you real metrics, real equations, okay? I mean, I just opened up to this one page, uh, page 129. And uh, this this is an essential ratio that I use in my on my own channel whenever we do investment uh, analysis, okay? Interest payments as a ratio to operating income, right? So in other words, like how easy is it for a company to cover its interest payments with its, with its uh, operating income, okay? He gives other equations and stuff, but I, I just find... I find it's really useful and it's very practical. Like I said, this is my type of book, okay? All right, 
philosophical, strategical one. Let's see. Okay, we'll do the almanac, okay? I'm not going to go grab it, but poor Charlie's almanac. Actually, I am going to grab it. First of all, what a great coffee table book, okay? Look how, look how pretty that is, all right? That's, that's a conversation starter for sure, especially whenever you open it up and you find some, some funny cartoons of Warren and Charlie. You know, anyway, I can't find one right now. But uh, I just want to highlight one of the things from this book. Okay, so for anybody who doesn't know, this is it's a short biography of Charlie Munger, and then it's a collection of a lot of lectures he gave in written form with commentary on it from him and it's just really good it's um i've read it cover to cover i found it entertaining it's a little slow at some parts and there are some talks that um i had a hard time with especially the coca-cola one i i don't know i just i still i've tried that one like two or three times and i'm and i've had trouble understanding exactly what he's getting at there but anyway uh one of my favorite things from this book is the what is it? Oh, his his uh, emphasis on how bad we are at dealing with numbers and dealing with tables of values and stuff like that. And he said mankind created one of the best tools for that, and that's the graph. And, you know, I think that's something that we try to really do on this channel. Um, I know Monish Prabhai says something to, along the lines of, you know, thou shall not use Excel. And I agree with that to some extent, but I think if you're using Excel to build visual aids like like graphs, you know, that you're conveying a lot more information than just looking at a table of numbers, okay? It's very hard to see patterns, uh, trends, that sort of thing if you're just looking at a, um, if you're looking at numbers, you know, it's, it's much easier on a graph. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words, so I don't know how many words or how many numbers are in a word, so it's worth even more numbers, I would think, right? Or I don't know. I don't know that conversion rate. All right, that is the almanac, poor Charlie's almanac. I would also say anything in the recommended reading of poor Charlie's almanac. Up there, I got yeah you know, Ben Franklin's autobiography, Guns, Germs, and Steel. There's other ones. I, I it's definitely worth reading. Okay. All right, what's next? A tactical one. Ah, I got one. The Little Book That Beats the Market by Joel Greenblatt. All right, I think he is one of the most underrated investors. And the reason I say that is because he's not really on anybody's Mount Rushmore, if you will, but he's gotten probably the best return in the last you know couple of decades compared to anybody. I want to say like over 40%. And he's been very transparent with his style. And it's all about the magic formula. And if y'all know my channel, you know I'm a big magic formula fan because... I think it is um, really the two most important things to look at in a, in a company, and this book really details the magic formula. It's going under the tactical thing because it really tells you about the magic formula needed to calculate, you know, what makes one stock better than another stock, right? Now, of course, like any guru that touts a magic formula, it's there's no formula in here, but you know, if you listen to him and you read the book, you get the essentials, right? The essentials are, it is uh, return on assets or return on invested capital, however you want to think about it, how efficient the company is running, and then how cheap it is. So PE, all right, those are the two pieces of the magic formula. Uh, but anyway, really good book, worth reading. It took me like really less than half a day to finish that, uh, just a couple hours. I think everybody should read that. It's very easy. All right, next, let's see, strategic book. Ah, okay, Phil Fisher. <clears throat> Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits, okay? This is uh, the book, and not, not the book, but Phil Fisher is one of the people that really helped Warren go from the Ben Graham style cigar butt investing to looking for very high quality companies that were gonna grow. Uh, you could say he really preaches the idea of uh, buying good companies, even paying a premium for them if you know they're going to grow, okay? So versus companies, let's say, that at first glance look very very undervalued. Let's, let's call them showers, okay? It's much better, he says, to uh, buy a grower than a shower. Okay, he didn't say that. Anyway, all right, what's next? Um, all right, tactical, the big one, security... 
security analysis. Okay, I remember whenever I was first getting into investing, somebody said that this was a good book to read, but that you should also uh, not read it first because it's intimidating. And so I read it first because, you know, it, I don't know why. It's um, it's a textbook. Uh, I would say the first half. I skimmed through because it was on bonds, and I was like, I'm not looking to invest in bonds. I'm looking to invest in uh, stocks. But I think that it really goes through the basics of um, how you should think about stocks, how you should go about valuing them, how, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's the, the basics. I think it's repeated elsewhere, but nobody really captures it as much as Graham and Dodd do in this book, okay? So, highly recommend all right, what's next? Strategic book. Hmm. Oh, I'm forgetting Peter Lynch. Okay. My bookshelf's going to fall over if I grab any more. All right, so not the bookshelf, but you know what I mean. All right, uh, Peter Lynch, Beating the Street. I don't know why I have this one and not one up on Wall Street, but um, in general, I think Peter Lynch is one of the best people to learn kind of the investing basics from how you should think about stocks. He gives a really good talk and I'll probably link it if I remember to, uh, where he talks about uh, like the common mistakes in investing right? and it's just how certain people think about stocks and you'll realize that everything he's telling you is how 99% of people you talk to about the stock market think. And I, th I think he does a very good job explaining how to overcome that, and he does a great job explaining the advantages that, especially this one is in the title, the advantages that uh, we have to beat Wall Street, okay? That, and by we, I mean individual investors, all right? Okay, which one was that? That was strategic, okay, tactical, hmm. All right, so another one, the same people that wrote the Warren Buffett and the Interpretation of Financial Statements uh, wrote this one, Buffettology. What I really like about this book is that it goes deeper into how uh, you should actually and how Warren actually values stocks. Okay, so it kind of flips the PE equation. It, it inverts it, if you will, in the words of Charlie Munger, right? Always invert. So instead of thinking about PE, they really preach the idea of uh, the internal rate of return and viewing a stock as a bond where the earnings are like an interest payment to you and using that to calculate, uh, to do a discounted cash flow and then calculate fair value. I'd say it's very tactical, all right? Okay, I'm gonna wrap up soon. Last one, the big one, The Intelligent Investor. Let me go over there. This is the book I gave all my younger cousins for Christmas. I think they were a little disappointed. I don't think I know that they were a little disappointed because they told me that I gave them a book for Christmas, but I think it's, um, I think it's that valuable, okay? And I think it's two chapters. Y'all can't see that, but chapter eight and chapter 20. And that's what I wrote on all their books. I wrote on the inside. I said, if you do nothing but read chapter eight and 20 uh, and understand it, then um, money will just be one less thing you have to worry about, okay? And I do believe that. I think that chapter eight is preaches how you should... Um, think about the market as a as a partner and how you should treat fluctuations in the market as opportunity and then chapter 20 teaches the principle of margin of safety now there's a whole book called margin of safety by seth Klarman, but i haven't read that i haven't bought it yet it's like a thousand dollars but um i think that the chapter does a very good job i think it comes naturally to me because i'm an engineer and we kind of always deal with we call them safety factors but you know a margin of safety basically the idea is like let's say you're designing this vessel and it needs to hold you know 95 pounds of pressure you're not gonna design it for 100 pounds okay you're gonna design it for 120 150 pounds of pressure okay same thing with investing if you see fair value at $70 or something you're not gonna buy it whenever it's selling for 69 you're going to wait for it to get to you know 40 or i don't know 50 it, it depends you know phil fisher would maybe disagree with that if it was a great company but um i think it's a very good lesson all right anyway i'm gonna wrap it up there if you got any questions any other type of video that you want to watch let me know 
Um, I know it's been a while. I can't guarantee when the next one will come out again. Just real life's been busy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.